I think that a lot of these shootings are perpetrated by people that have mental health conditions. But mental health attorney Josh Moselle says many of the people who commit these crimes don't actually have a clinical diagnosis. For gun rights to be restricted, that is a requirement. But he says in Arizona, when it comes to getting an involuntary diagnosis. The process is incredibly difficult to, to get through. It starts with an application for court-ordered evaluation by any responsible individual for a person they believe is a danger to self or others or is a person with a persistent or acute disability who is unwilling or unable to undergo a voluntary evaluation. So that agency completes a screening. If they believe the person needs to be picked up, they issue a pickup order that person's brought in. Though that may sound simple. And there's a bunch of steps that have to be met. There's a lot of pressures outside of whether or not the person clinically meets the standard. And that's important because if their concerning behavior doesn't rise to the standard to force treatment. They're released back into the community as if that never happened. That's what happens most of the time for people going through that process is that they don't make it to the judge. But if they do meet the standard. Then they get referred uh, to one of, in Maricopa County to one of our hospitals where they get seen by two psychiatrists and a social worker. Dr. Carol Olson is the chair of psychiatry oh, for Valley Wise Health System, which does all evaluations for involuntary commitment in Maricopa County. Or about a week later, the person has a court hearing before a judge. There ha at that time, there have to be have been two witnesses show up in court to this person having making these violent statements and having signs of a mental illness. If the judge decides in favor of court ordered treatment, then and only then can a person be legally banned from purchasing a gun. Still, Dr. Olson says the mental health system is not capable of being a fail safe for violence. Even people who say are paranoid and angry and irritable, most of those people don't go on to be violent. So it's, it's just difficult to make those predictions. But she does think improvements can be made, like red flag laws for people who fall outside of the standard for court ordered treatment. They don't require that a mental illness be identified. They just require that there be evidence of the person being a potential violent person due to their statements or behavior. How do we pick out the person who's going to go and commit a mass shooting? It's a needle in a haystack. Moselle says in a country with nearly 400 million guns and a second amendment that allows them, no one change in law is going to make a difference. I think if we're going to actually try to solve this problem, it's putting together 50 different ideas and making them work together. Courtney Holmes, ABC 15, Arizona.